Hi, my name's Ken Schultz. I'm a photographer and I want to introduce you to my new online digital photography course called Easy DSLR. But for now, I want to talk about these DSLR cameras, which are the cameras that allow you to look straight through the lens via a prism system and a viewfinder. Now, these have a whole bunch of advantages of a point and shoot. For one, you can change the lenses so you can upgrade to more professional quality lenses. They have a huge sensor at the back so that your image quality is far superior to those of point and shoots and allows, allowing you to get lower light photographs. They have a much quicker response rate so when you take photos with these there's very little time between pressing the button and, and actually getting the photograph so that allows you to be able to get more crucial shots better. And and of course the advantages over old school film cameras are huge. You have, a, have memory cards which literally can fit hundreds of photographs on them. So with the old film cameras you'd pretty much get a maximum of 36 shots on a film and then you'd have to change rolls of film. So with these you can be shooting hundreds of photographs which is great for getting your skills up quicker because you can experiment a lot more and you get instant feedback, so that makes a big difference over the old school film cameras. If you've just bought one of these DSLR cameras, you might find that your spouse or family or friends criticizing you and saying, oh, why are you buying such an expensive toy? But the reality is this is a lot more than a toy. So once you know the basic settings of these cameras and you start getting better photographs, their criticisms are going to soon be silenced and they'll be cheering you on, seeing the amazing images that you can get with these cameras. In fact, people are making a full-time living with these cameras. Photographers use the exact same cameras now that you can go buy from online stores and photographic stores for under $1,000. So you can actually get one of these cameras and start to earn money and have a full-time photography business. Okay, so the question is, what makes a good photograph? Now, there's a whole bunch of things. Some people just say that all you need is light and understand light to get a good photograph. But really, there's quite a few key principles that you need to understand. And it's not rocket science, but it's, there are some basic things that you need to know to be able to push your photos to the next level. And basically, once you understand the principles and you start mastering your DSLR camera then really you can get stunning photographs in your own backyard. You don't really need to travel to some amazing location to get good photographs. And so once you master the camera then when you do get a chance to go to some exotic location then you'll get stunning photographs. So I'm definitely of the opinion that you can take an ordinary photograph of an extraordinary subject or a extraordinary photograph of an ordinary subject. So if you have the skills, you can actually get amazing photographs of just simple everyday situations. And that's the point of my course. So with my Easy DSLR photography course, the idea is to build up your understanding of these basic principles that you need. And I actually use a real simple foundation to build upon your knowledge and understanding and once you master those settings and understand the basic principles then then you can start taking really good photographs and you can use them for your your blog and in fact you can even get to the point where as your pho photography progresses you could start earning money with your photographs so knowing these key principles core principles really makes it easy to learn how to take better photographs because a lot of the complexity of these cameras are really layers over the basic principles. So if you understand those basic principles, you'll see that all these extra settings and functions that make it complicated are just really layers on top and you'll be able to understand and go to those basic principles and get better photographs. And then as far as learning the menus and understanding the extra settings and all these extra things they put on top, then you can go to the manual and learn those easily enough. Now I want to give you a little bit of background about myself. The whole idea of these videos is to give you some idea of my teaching style and to know a little bit about my background so you can understand why I'm qualified to teach you the basics of using these DSLR cameras. Well really it all started when I got my first DSLR camera back in 1980. I was still a kid and I got this camera 
The funny thing is, it's almost accidental because I started getting into astronomy and I got this great telescope and I wanted to take photographs through the telescope. And I found the only way I could do that is by getting a camera where you see through the lens. So when I attach it to the telescope, I can actually see through the telescope and take the photographs. So, so I ended up getting a second-hand SLR camera and then from then on I ended up getting more into photography and the astronomy got left behind a little. And then later on I got into marine biology. I was studying dolphins and I started taking a lot of photographs. So with dolphins we used to take photographs of their dorsal fins, which is the fin on top, and they have characteristic notches and scarring that we identify individuals with. And now the trick with that is I was using a fully manual camera. It was a Nikon FM2. So no fancy automatic controls. It was just basically load the film, set the film speed, and then you really only have focusing, your aperture setting, and your shutter speed. And that's all you had to do. So you had to predict when the animals come to the surface. And that taught me a lot about anticipation and manually focusing, pre-focusing, on certain areas to get good photographs. So this is really one of my first tips that if you're taking photographs of events that you kind of know where they're going to happen, but you don't know exactly what the timing is going to be, then the, it's best to have manual focus. So you focus on something that's around the same distance and then you get ready, you flip it over to manual focus and anticipate the event and you're ready. And as soon as the event happens, you shoot off one or multiple shots and you've got a much better chance of getting the photograph you want. See, the thing is with unpredictable events, if you set it to autofocus and you're waiting and then when, when you take the photograph and this unpredictable event happens, there really isn't time for the autofocus to work and you get the shot. There's barely enough time for you to hit the shutter, let alone the autofocus system to work. So manual focus is definitely the way to go in those situations. So later on I actually moved on and I got into wedding photography and that started pushing my photography in a different direction. I started becoming more capable at portrait photographs and using flash in flattering ways and that really pushed the envelope of my photographic understanding. I used to design these fine art albums for the brides and they were very happy with them and that, in fact that was one of the most successful parts of our business was the photographic packages. And you really have to get good quick because you don't want to disappoint a bride so I found that my photographic skills were really learnt in the trenches. So I don't have any fancy photographic degree or diploma. I've basically developed my understanding and my skills and my way of shooting over 30 years of shooting in the trenches and just experience through travel, the marine biology and wedding photographs. So in the wedding business days I was using a Canon 5D and that was the first time I had a, a good quality digital SLR. And since then I've started working with the newer camera Canon 60D and that does really good photographs as well as amazing quality HD video and that's the reason I bought it. I really wanted to experiment a little bit more with the HD video modes. And so that pretty much gives you an idea of my background. This course, to be honest, is not some glitzy Hollywood production. It's basically just me and my camera teaching you the principles. So it's basically like looking over my shoulder and and having the benefit of my 30 years of experience applied to these digital SLR cameras. So if you're ready to jump in, just go down to the bottom and click one of those buy now buttons and I'll see you in the membership area. Thanks for listening.